my name is Charlotte Dennis, and I'm here at ArtSpark Studio in Roselle. And ArtSpark is a studio for children and adults to take art and sewing classes. We also have a garden with three chickens and two guinea pigs. And at ArtSpark, we really like to use um, recycled materials or natural materials from our garden. This is our project, Native Birds on a Winter Tree. And today, since it's spring, we're going to add leaves to create a spring tree. And here you can see that we have used a tree branch or a twig from our garden to create the tree. And our birds are made from watercolor paper and watercolor. But if you don't have watercolor paper at home right now, you could use um, a cereal box. The inside of the paper can be um, similar stiffness to watercolor paper, so you could use that instead. And the native birds that I've chosen for this project are a sulfur-crested cockatoo, a red-tailed black cockatoo, a pink cockatoo, a yellow-tailed black cockatoo, and a cockatiel. And you could choose to use these same native birds in your project, or you could think of your own native birds to use. Our materials that we'll use today are a lead pencil and eraser, some watercolor paper, our watercolors, a cup of water, a brush for your watercolor with soft bristles, you may also want a brush that has tough bristles for your glue, or you can spread your glue with your finger. You'll need some scissors, some thin paper for attaching your birds to the tree branch. We also have pegs to hold our birds onto the branch and our branch. I also have a cloth here for dabbing any extra watercolor. And finally, some glue and a thin paper um, that's already painted green or printed green for my leaves on my tree. Our first step will be to draw our birds on our watercolor paper using our pencil. So I'm going to begin in the corner of the page so that I can fit as many birds as possible on my watercolor paper. Um, you'll probably draw about five birds to fill up your tree, or if it's a little smaller, maybe three birds. So I'm going to start with drawing the head of my bird. The bird's body will be about seven centimeters long. It might be about the size of your hand or your palm. And if we draw it this size, it will help us to um, have a bit of an easier time cutting it out later. If it's very small, it can be tricky to cut out. So the head is a circle. And then I attach an oval for the chest. And finally, a rectangle for the tail. And this bird's face is going to be looking to the side, so I'll draw the cockatoo's beak, which is like a curved triangle. And I'm going to now connect the head and the chest with these curves that can be the feathers filling in between those shapes. And same thing for my tail, filling in with this small curve. And for my wings, I'm going to draw them separately. Um, this will give our bird a little bit of dimension when we glue our wings on. And my wings should be about the length of my bird body um, plus one half. So they'll be from the head to the tip of the tail plus the head to the middle of the belly. So I can measure that. And then I want one half more. 
So you can see the wings are quite long. And I'm going to draw my wings as two teardrop shapes meeting in the middle. Try and make them about the same length. And you can see that the shape that they make together is kind of like a mustache. Um, that can help you remember how to make this shape. And I'm going to, again, make that little curve attaching the shapes. Your wings could curve up a little bit or curve down. Mine are going straight out on this one. And I'm going to add some little triangles along my wing to be the feathers at the edges of the wing. So now I have my body and wings of my first bird and I can erase these shapes that I use to build them. Just carefully erasing those lines I don't need anymore. And I can draw where I want to put my eye as well. Now you can think about um, what kind of native birds these are going to be. Um, I want to make a um, two different kinds of cockatoos and one king parrot. So I know that this cockatoo and this cockatoo both have crests that I want to attach after I paint. So I think about what shape I would use to make those feathers that stand up. And I'm going to draw it down here. I will we'll cut it out later and glue it on. And my king parrot doesn't have a crest, so I only need to draw two. So you may draw um, more birds than this um, if your tree is bigger, um, or perhaps you draw three like I did. Next, we will be cutting out the birds that we've drawn. So I cut my paper into pieces so it's easier to cut out each shape. First I'll cut out my crest. I cut along the edges very carefully. And then for any small shapes, I can cut them out after. And now I have my bird. I can just check that the pieces fit together well. The wings seem to be the right size for the body, and so does the crest. Before I begin to add watercolor, I'm going to erase these extra pencil lines around the edge of my bird. I'm first going to get my brush wet and this bird is going to be my sulfur crested cockatoo. So I want to paint, the, the bird's body will be mostly white, but I want it to have little touches of yellow in the feathers. I'm going to use a special technique called wet in wet. So I'm going to first prepare some yellow. I'm taking my wet brush and stroking across the yellow watercolor and then laying it out on the palette. And I want my yellow to be a little bit darker. I'm going to add a touch of this tan. So now I have my color ready that I want to use. I'll wash my brush off. And for this wet and wet technique, I'm going to paint the whole bird's body with just water. And I'm spreading the water across the paper. I don't want it to be a very thick layer of water. It's just a thin layer. And I'm avoiding going onto the beak. And now I can take my brush, dip into the yellow that I put on my palette, 
and I'm just going to make some small strokes in the water. And these can be the soft edges of the feathers of the sulfur crested cockatoo. I want to paint my crest bright yellow. So again, getting my brush wet, dipping into my yellow paint. Maybe I'll put a little more. Mixing it together. So dipping into this yellow paint Now it is still light yellow. Um, I'm going to let it dry a little bit and then I'll add another layer of watercolor. I want to paint my bird's beak um, gray. So I'm going to check that the feather area next to the beak feels dry. If it were still wet and I painted gray right here on the beak, the gray paint would start to flow into the white and yellow here, and the yellow paint might flow into the gray beak. So I just want to be very certain that before I paint next to something, it is all the way dry. So I'm testing with the tip of my finger, and it feels dry. It doesn't feel cold or wet anymore. So I will take a little bit of black from my palette and I'll start to spread it out. And you can see that as I spread the black out and it has more water in it, it looks gray. So now that it's light enough, I can paint very carefully my sulfur crested cockatoo's beak. And I can check whether the eye feels dry enough around the eye. You might want to use um, a colored pencil or an oil pastel to make the detail of the eye, but if you feel comfortable using the tip of your brush, you can paint over that pencil dot to create your eye. And the cockatoo also has a little ring around its eye sometimes. So I painted a little ring with the very tip of my brush. And my crest, I'll just add one more layer of yellow. Cleaning all the black off my brush. And now preparing a little more yellow. And I'll just do one more layer. You can see it looks brighter now. I might just add a few lines in my tail feathers and on my wing. If your watercolor starts to bleed, you can use your cloth or your rag and gently pat the paper to soak up any extra color or water, but only pat with your cloth. If you drag your cloth and pull it across the paper, it can rip the paper. So remember to pat if you need to. The next bird I will be painting is the yellow-tailed black cockatoo. And this one will be my bird with its wings resting like this. So I'm going to first paint, um, I'll do some layering for this bird. And I need to paint my light colors first. Um, it will work a bit better for the layering um, when I add black over these light colors. It will have less um, smearing. So my yellow-tailed black cockatoo has some yellow in its tail, a yellow cheek patch, and um, maybe a, a tiny bit of yellow showing through its wings or a little bit of gray and then it will be black over the rest of it.
And now I will add some light gray in the wing as well. So I stroke lightly across the black, spread it out with some water until it looks light enough. And one more thing I want to add before I think about the black feathers is a little ring around my cockatoo's eye and I want to use this light brown color. Stroking the paint and just make this little ring. And when it's dry, I can make the middle of it black. Washing my brush and then scooping up some of this gray. I'll paint my beak light gray. Now, while these parts that I've painted are drying, I can paint my crest black. And I can test now if my bird's yellow parts feel dry enough. I think it is ready. So when your paint is dry, you can begin to layer. Make sure my cheek patch and my eye are dry enough. And my beak, they all seem dry. So I can begin to paint around them. And I can paint the dot of my eye. And I may even want to draw the line of my beak. I'll do the same for my wings now that they're dry. These, um, if you have two separate wings, one will go behind the body. So I'll put my glue on this teardrop, the bottom of the teardrop here, the top of the wing. Just spread some glue and hold it in place where I want my wing to go. And you probably want one wing to go a little higher and one to point a bit lower so that you can see both. So I could change the angle by pulling the wing. And since this one's going on the front, I'll put the glue on the back. Pressing my wing down, making sure I can see the tips of both and I'll put this clip to hold while it dries. And I can see how my crest looks. Putting some glue on the back and pressing onto the head. So now you can see how it would look with the crest behind the head or in front of the head. Next, I will need to take my thin paper and we're basically going to be making our own tape to attach the birds to our tree branch. So I'm going to cut my paper into small strips and you'll need one for each bird. And this strip is going to go along the back of the bird's body. It will be wrapped around my tree branch. And I will hold my bird in the spot that I want her to be placed and put my strip of gluey paper onto the back. So 
very carefully pressing down and I will place a peg maybe two and now my tree is ready for some leaves while my birds are drying as they attach to the tree I'm going to make some leaves with this green paper and this is the shape I'll be creating, kind of like a spoon. And the way I'll make this shape is to fold my paper and I can draw a line and a curve to create half of my spoon shape. And then I will cut along the shape and when I unfold you can see it has the little spoon shape that we can use for our leaf. I will be attaching my leaves to the tree by wrapping the stem or the handle of the spoon around the tree branch. So that means I'll need to put glue on the stem part of the leaf. And I think I want my leaf right here. So I will lay the front of the leaf across the stem and then wrap the stem of the leaf to the back side and press it together. And now my tree branch has a big leaf. Here I have my finished project of my native birds on a spring tree.